Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video we are going to explore chemical weathering. So what is chemical weathering? Well, chemical weathering is a process that breaks down rocks, components and internal structures of minerals. In the previous video we looked at mechanical weathering. We saw how by different factors mechanical weathering breaks down big rocks into smaller pieces. But on the other side, chemical weathering is not like mechanical weathering. Chemical weathering actually goes into the rock and it breaks down the rock's components and internal structures of minerals. So if we look at a rock under a microscope, we see that it is composed of different minerals and chemical components. What chemical weathering does is it breaks these chemical components and mineral structures. And by that, you get the rock unit to break down. We have three types of chemical weathering. We have dissolution, we have oxidation, and we have hydrolysis. In the following slides, we will look at each of these in more detail. So the first one is the solution. What is the solution? Well, the solution is weathering by water. Imagine you have a block of sugar and water drops on it. You can imagine that after a while, this solid block of sugar will be dissolved and nothing of the sugar or nothing of the block of sugar will be left over. This is exactly what the solution is. If you have a rock that contains a material or that contains a chemical component that is highly reactive with water, when water interacts with this rock, after a while it chemically weathers it away. So we have rocks that have salt or halite in it. When water interacts with this rock, it will chemically weather it away and after a while most of the rock is gone. Let me give you a live picture. So in this picture, I'm not quite sure if there was halite in it, but imagine there was halite in it. When halite or salt interacted with the water, all the halite dissolved in water and it came out from the rock. So you can see all these cavities that you have. There might have been halite in it and it was chemically weathered away. This is an example of how chemical weathering works. Also, a different way chemical weathering works is by acid. We know that acid is composed or we can make acid from carbon dioxide and rainwater. When we have CO2 and H2O, we can create acid. Acid is highly reactive with calcite or CaCO3. When acid interacts with a rock that contains calcite, it will chemically weather it away and the rock will decompose. The other type of chemical weathering that we have is oxidation. We can see oxidation in everyday life. So oxidation is nothing else but weathering by rusting. So imagine you have a piece of metal like a nail. When rain drops on it or when this nail interacts with water, the iron gets oxidized and in more conventional terms, the iron becomes rusty. Basically, what this rust is, is oxidized iron. And in small pieces, the oxidized iron breaks away from the nail and weathers. So, just like we saw in mechanical weathering, how mechanical weathering turned big rocks into smaller pieces, rusting or oxidization is the same way. It turns metal or those materials that contain iron into smaller pieces. So if we have a rock that contains iron and this iron gets oxidized, over a period of time this rock will be chemically weathered away because all the iron will come out of the rock and it will be chemically weathered. The last type of chemical weathering that we have is hydrolysis. So what is hydrolysis? Well, hydrolysis is the decomposition of those rocks that contain silica by water. So those rocks that contain silica and they interact with water, by the process of hydrolysis, they get chemically weathered away. So I bet by now you ask, what is the difference between hydrolysis and the solution? Well, the difference between hydrolysis and the solution is that hydrolysis is the chemical breakdown of a compound due to reaction with water. But on the other hand, the solution 
is the process by which the original status of matter turn into liquid or other solvent and becomes a solute. This is a key word. Basically, when you have salt or sugar or any other material that can dissolve in water, that is the solution. But the chemical reaction that happens or the chemical breakdown of a compound due to reaction with water that is hydrolysis. I hope you can make the difference between hydrolysis and dissolution because there are different types of chemical weathering. So to recap the entire lecture, 